The party was nice, the party was pumping. Hey, yeah. And everybody having a ball. Hey, hey. Until the fellas started him calling. Hey, and the girls respond to the call. Hey, I hey, have a poor hey, shout hey. out. Who let the dogs out? Who, 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 who let the dogs out? This is Andy Tube. In this video, I'm going to be working on the feed dog of a Singer Model 301A. And this is uh, my guinea pig for this series. I, I named this machine, Oh No. Um, as in, Oh No, what's wrong with my feed dog? <laughs> okay, so uh, I, I want to check the height and position of the feed dog. When it's when I turn the hand wheel and it it you know goes down and then comes up at the highest point, is it the correct height? Which Singer says is 0 .043 inches above the needle plate here. That's how high the the very tip top of those teeth on the feed dog should rise above the needle plate. Before I do that though, I want to talk a little bit about this part down here um, that's like next to the hook in the bobbin case area. Let me see if I tilt that up if you can get a pretty good look at it. This is what I'm uh, talking about here. and uh, I'm sure most of you know what that is, but some may not the the uh, formal name I guess for it is the feed bar throw out lever screw thumb nut and most people just call it the throw out or the throw out thumb nut or the feed drop uh, nut and by throw out they mean that the turning this will allow the feed dogs to lower down and stay down below the needle plate. So if you want to freestyle and uh, darn and things like that. And uh, I, I also heard a young lady one time call it the turny thingy that makes the teeth go down. But I'm just going to call it the throw out thumb nut. And this should turn readily for you. Mm -hmm. It should not be hard to turn. Uh, if it is, it's got kind of a straight blade opening there, and you can put, um, you know, a large flat screwdriver in there to turn it. But it it shouldn't need that. So uh, sometimes this is never been used <laughs> and uh, a lot of times it's seldom used so if you just just drop a drop of oil down in there um, it should help uh, loosen it up for you and the reason I wanted to start with this was um, just to show you when it when it's turned all the way clockwise that's normal operation. When you turn it counterclockwise, it, it throws out or drops the feed dog bar, I would say. So the feed dog is still going to like be moving, but it's going to stay down above the needle plate. So, uh, let, me, let me see if I could demonstrate that. So the, I've got it thrown out or lowered. It's turned all the way counterclockwise. Let's see if I can maybe so here's the where the feed dog and I'll operate it here and you see it's not coming up. It's not rising up above the needle plate. But if I go back under here and turn it back in or turn it to the right or turn it clockwise and put it back in the normal 
operating mode. There we go. Then as I turn the hand wheel, we should see that uh, feed dog rise up. There it comes, right there. Okay, normal operation, I have it in forward so position. So it kind of dips down, comes up in the front and drags the fabric towards the back and down, up, drag to the back. If I put the feed regulator in reverse and look at it, then it's going to not work. Hmm. Did I put that up? Thought I did. Mm-hmm. Looks up to me. There we go. Now it's coming up on the back side here and it's going to move forward and drop down and come the other way. So when you're sewing in reverse, it's actually moving the fabric towards you. Down, go to the back, come up, go to the front, that's reverse. And now it's going to cycle through, it's going to come up in the front, come across to the back, pulling the fabric away from you, and then dropping down. Okay, so the point of this is like before you check the height of your feed dog position, you would want to be sure that this uh, feed throw out thumb nut is turned all the way clockwise. Because if somebody was playing with it or had used it and didn't turn it in all the way, uh, maybe the height of your feed dog wouldn't be right because this is partially engaged. Okay, so that's what that is for. If you're going to check the height of your feed dog, this needs to be turned in all the way. But let's uh, position this machine now so that we can check the height of the, of the feed dog. The hardest part about checking the height of the feed dog is to find something that is 0 0.043 inches thick. Now what I've done is taken a couple blades from my feeler gauge and let me see which ones I decided on here. The two I chose are a 0 0.030 and a point zero one three so together they are zero point four three inches thick and that's exactly what you want if you uh, use millimeters uh, I think that's uh, one point zero nine two two millimeter is what you need now in the, in the United States here, a dime, a 10 cent piece, is a .053. So that would be about 25% uh, thicker. Um, but if that's all you got is a dime, you're just going to have to try and, try and set it below the height of a dime and kind of estimate it. And remember, this is the factory setting that I'm talking about. Some people purposely set their feed dog a little high because they're of the type of fabric that they're going to be sewing. And some set it a little bit low because they want to kind of like uh, semi-freestyle sew. I wouldn't do that myself. I would just use that throw-out thumb nut to, to lower it a little bit. But anyway, what we want to do here is set the stitch length at eight as near as you can tell put that stitch length at number eight and then when you have something that is point zero four three we'll put it up here next to the feed dog we're going to see if I can zoom in a little 
and still not blurry too much. Um, we we'll turn the feed dog or the hand, the hand turn the hand wheel towards you until the feed dog is at the highest highest point highest point. So you see it's it's coming up here towards the front of the opening and as it gets up here it's high and then as it starts heading to towards the back it's going to start going down in below. So I wish I could tell you like you know the exact um, thing. I think when the needle bar is all the way up is is pretty close to the position that the feed dog is going to be at its highest point. When you have the feed dog at the highest level you want to put your thickness gauge up to it and see how how you do. Now on this I think my blades are bent a little bit but if I push down tight on the blade the two blades it pushes up against the feed dog and stops. If you if you do this and, and of course whatever you have starts going over the feed dog you know you're too low but you might just have one thing that's 0.4 millimeter or 0 0.043 inches so I've got it up here as flat as I can be and I'm just going to feel it now you can get down here at eyeball level and you can see if the tip of the teeth is sticking up below you can feel it as best you can to see if it feels level and I, I think these feel great um, so I don't think I would adjust these but yours may be higher than you want or they may be too low and you're having trouble feeding uh, you know your fabric and stuff through or uh, or it's kinda slippery no matter how much um, pressure bar pressure you put on it. So I'm going to show you how to set the height in case you want to or ever need to. Okay, so I'm going to put the machine down here. I'm going to try and prop it up for you so you can get a pretty good shot of it. Take off my bottom plate, bed plate, oil pan. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, where you make these adjustments isn't over here, where near the feed dog. It's at the opposite end over here. It's just like the timing. When you time the hook, that's over here. You do the work over here. So, this is what we need to work on for height. And you've got to loosen this uh, nut and on the other end is a screw that you have to turn and you don't need to turn it much you just turn it right or left and the feed dog will you know will kind of come up and down but to get in there is the tricky part I have an offset screwdriver but I can't I can't fit it in there I've got my um, you know Chapman little midget ratchet but it's still a little too too big to get in there so I'm going to at least need to remove the motor retention plate here I think I got the right and yeah, working around the camera again let's try this <clears throat> wow I never understood why people crank these down so hard Okay, was was that ever an adventure? Getting the uh, the motor hold mount off of there. A short story: I had to cut the head of the screw off because it stripped uh, and cracked in half. A long story. Stay tuned at the end of the video, and I'll put some clips on there of my adventure getting that off. But let's get back to uh, checking and setting the height. Uh, like I said, on this machine, the height was okay, but uh, but uh, 
to change the height higher or lower uh, is done right here and what this there is an adjustment screw on this end and on this end is a nut so when you get it adjusted where you want it you tighten the nut and it keeps it there and it's kind of a bearing in, or a bushing in there too so of course to change the setting now we're going to take a uh, wrench and we're going to loosen that nut and this is a 3 8 inch 3 8 inch uh, wrench and I'll just go in here on that little nut and and loosen it. Now, the thing is once you loosen it um, you know it's going to to kind of change the setting here okay so you can see now it's moving kind of freely just with my fingers so to to reiterate how can we how can I do this so you can see it maybe if I turn oh no like this and get here see if you can see the you can see the feed dogs here okay and then maybe I can work from the side over here so I have my thickness or height gauge uh, couple pieces of metal here that together add up to 0 0.043 inch and remember the stitch length the stitch length lever is set to 8 and I got it there but I think I'm gonna turn that right and lock it in and then I'm gonna turn the hand wheel to get that feed dog up uh, to the highest spot here which is usually with your needle bar all the way up okay that looks pretty good then whatever you're using for the height you're going to put on one side of, or the other and you're going to hold it there I wish these were longer you know it'd be nice is like a if, if you found like a popsicle stick or something that was that height or maybe a a uh, flat piece of aluminum or steel or something I'm gonna have to go on on your side of that to get in there so I feel comfortable holding it I really gosh that's gonna block you Let's see what I can do here with this keep slipping on me too Let's see if I can get this range a little bit better I want you to be able to see that feed dog. See if I just turn that screw by hand. Maybe I can just turn it a little by hand and you can see the there, see the feed dog going down. Now it's coming up. Now it's going down. Mm-hmm. You see it moving there? So I'm just turning that screw with my fingertips because I've got the nut loose. So maybe I can go on the back side. Basically you want to get the height set where you want it by turning that screw. And then you want to hold the screwdriver in place to keep it at that height while you tighten the nut kind of like the lock nut so this 
I can tell my feed dog is below. Let's see if I can get this up any higher. There we go. Whoop. Actually, I'm going to tighten that nut a little because it's so easy to turn that that it just kind of slips out of place there. Let's see if I can get my offset screwdriver in there. So this is where you wish you had like three hands and a long neck. <laughs> Good, right there, right there. Okay, so I got the height right. So without turning the hand wheel, what I want to do is hold that screw in place to keep it from turning because I got it just at the right spot. And then I'm going to tighten the nut. There. Okay. Now, let me just go back and check it here. Let's see how I did. Oops. Okay. So we'll double check now. My stitch length is at 8. My feed dog is at the high spot. And I'll take my measure device and see by look and feel. Yeah, I think it's good. So that would be to uh, raise or lower. And like I said, um, if you don't have something like this, uh, as a matter of fact, let me get a dime. Okay. So the dime... 10 cents is very close. It's just a little bit thicker than 0 .043 inch. This is 0 .053. So they're very close. So if you didn't have a feeler gauge, you could put a dime up here. And what you would want is just that the dog is a little bit lower than the dime you know so you could come across from the dog and you'd have to go up very close and you know when you get that close I don't think it's going to matter that much personally because in in um, working with uh, the feed dog, you have a lot of control up here on the presser foot, too. And and all fabrics are a little different. I mean, you might be sewing vinyl, and the next day you might be sewing fleece. So to get it in that range, I think, is very good. And if it was me, a little bit higher versus a little bit lower would work for me. Um, 
because a hire is, is you know, you know you're going to make contact and you can control with the presser bar pressure control. Usually the complaints that I've had is if it is too low, if it's down too low and it's not uh, moving the material well. Okay, now let me take you back on the underside and I'm going to undo all the work I just did to make sure you got the idea here of uh, how this is. This is the lock nut and this is the adjuster screw on this side. It goes all the way through this bushing and they connect together. So if you want to change the setting uh, we'll just go in here and lefty loosey the lock nut and then you would put your screwdriver in there and you would move it up and down like that to get it where you want now if you don't and then and then when you get it you have to hold the screw steady because it kind of wants to turn when you're going to tighten it and then you're going to righty tidy the lock nut like that and then you can double check it and when you're sure you got it where you want then you can be uh, extra sure that you're good and tight here so that you know it doesn't it doesn't wear uh, get loose on you okay now if you don't have a offset screwdriver that will work for you what you can do is uh, come in here and uh, there's a screw here and there's a screw up here that takes this bracket out or you can loosen the screw on the terminal the little two silver screws here and push the terminal in so you'll either have a small hole there to put a regular screwdriver through or you'll have a larger hole if you take the whole cover plate out then you could come in from over here through the hole and come right into the adjustment As a matter of fact let me get a get one of my old screwdrivers here yeah, it's a, it's a little bit too, well, actually you could almost come in from an angle too. But I'll let you figure that out. Okay. So that is how to check and set the height of the feed dog on the Singer Model 301A. Don't forget that before you check or make any changes, that you make sure that that is all the way turned in here, see? Because that's how you would lower the feed down, right? And then when you're going to do your measuring and adjusting, be sure that your stitch length is on number eight, and be sure that you turn the hand wheel and get that feed dog up to its highest position which is usually when the needle bar is all the way up that's it all right so I think the next video I'm going to do if you if your uh, feed dog is out of adjustment front to back front to back here so if it's too far forward or too far back it might be knocking on the needle plate as it's going up and down and there's an adjustment for that and I will show you that next time thank you very much I hope you tune in and if you want hang on here and I'll put up some clips of my struggle with that with that screw that's the worst screw stuck I've ever encountered on a sewing machine and I'm not sure how I'm going to fix it. <laughs>
So if any of you stick around and watch that and you have some advice for me about how to get that broken screw out of oh no, um, be sure you leave me a comment about that. Take care. We'll see you next time. Okay. I think I named you right. Oh no, the screw is really over tightened. Oh no!